Hey guys, Stanford here with the Fun Robotics Network, and welcome back to an episode of Behind the Bumpers. And here, I'm hanging out with Team 9408 here at SoCal Showdown, and we're going to be taking a look at this really cool machine that they've got here. Uh, we're going to go through their Cascade Elevator, their arm, um, the software that powers all of these crazy mechanisms, their ground algae intake, and so much more. So stay tuned for another look at that on this episode of Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you, and also in partnership with the following. Founded by FIRST alumni, FRC Tees understands what teams need. High quality apparel fast. From t-shirts to jackets and more, with a free 14-day turnaround and faster options available, you can join 200 plus teams who are already saving. Apply for a sponsorship and get your quote now at FRCTees.com. AnyMark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options through their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to AndyMark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions. All right, Carson, take it away. Okay, so first of all, we have a 28 by 28 drive base, which is powered by swerve modules. And a fun fact about our drive base is it's lowered by an inch which lowers our CD. And the way it's lowered is we have an extra one by one uh, before we put the screws through, which means we had to extend our screws by an inch. And then as company with our drive base, we also have a two-stage cascading elevator, which is powered by these two Kraken X60s, which is a five to one gear ratio that are, have these two guards that are connected to two gears, which then lead to this drive shaft, which is connected to these two chains that lead up to uh, our two-stage cascading elevator. And then on our chain, we have a chain tensioner, which also like makes sure our chain is always tight and we can we always check it. And then uh, we all have our radio right here and also LEDs for our programmers to see like what the state of the robot is in. And then we also have our RSL right here to make sure that the people know. And then I'll hand it off to Anthony to describe more about our carriage. And so going into our carriage, we have a uh, Kraken X44 down here and that's on a 66 to one gear ratio. So it actually goes out this direction and then there's a one to one gear. So that's a 44 tooth. And then that outputs to over here. And then from there, that's a sprocket, 35 chain sprocket that attaches here. In the 2024 off season, we had issues with um, positioning of our pivots. So you can see here, there's two herringbone gears and these herringbone gears are attached to a West Coast products through bore encoder. And that through bore encoder helps us figure out where the position of our um, of our pivot is at all times. Going off to the pivot, going off the pivot, we have our manipulator. And so our manipulator is um, less than six pounds. And that was very, um, very important to our robot so that we didn't have to lift up so much and so our elevator was able to um, fully extend within less than a second. And so going into our manipulator, it is a four to one ratio, and we're able to grab coral from the outside, and then it's also able to grab algae on this side. Um, this has gone through multiple iterations. This is about version seven, and early on to, into the season, we were grabbing coral from the inside, but we found that that wasn't very effective because it lowered our, um, our acquisition zone, and so we found that this was way better. Um, so a couple of the iterations were, like there was, uh, I would say about like three iterations that were, that the core would be grabbed from the inside. And it was just like testing, oh, does four wheels work? Does three wheels work? Um, like all of that. And then after that, about like iteration five, four and five, it was adding the algae portion, but that was powered by, it was two motors. So one motor was for the coral and another one was for the algae. And then we finally settled on this, this iteration on like about version six and so we had a like a a um small version of it that would that would kind of it be it was a super simple version and then by version seven we had this um which increased our acquisition zone so a coral is like four and a half inches and this from plate to plate is about seven so we added this wedge here that um was able to um, increase the acquisition zone so we're able to grab coral from about like nine inches which including this um this wedge right here going to the hang now our hang is a 365 to one ratio and you can see here that that's powered by a kraken x60 and you can see all the gears here um we have rope that's it's letting that's being pulled down so that the hang is when the hang gets into its 
hang position. Um, and then from there, you have a sort of a 2910 kind of style like um, cage grabber um, with the two four inch wheels. And then you have the, um, the hooks with a spring at the back right here. And then that's all powered by a Kraken X44. And then going off into the algae intake, the algae intake was our last addition to the robot. It was done right before champs. And this is so that we can grab algae off of the ground. And I can hand it over to Amy to talk more about the logistics behind that. Uh, I'm Amy Flores and going through the strategy of making the decision to add the algae intake specifically that can pick up algae off the ground. We wanted to fill the role of a third robot that could complement these strongly scoring coral robots who had ground intakes for coral specifically. We saw a lot of potential in the points from the algae on the ground and we knew that we could efficiently be able to handle those game pieces and look appealing to other more competitive teams. Um, that got us into adding a whole nother sector to our safety code, which was how we would manipulate and handle the game pieces on the field without interfering or hitting the robot or game elements on the field. And a lot of it is auto scoring and automation, which allows us to have one driver. And now I'm gonna talk about our driver optimizations and localization of our robots. So we utilize two Limelight 4s on our robots. They're centered right in front of the tag. So when we're lining up to score, we can see a tag at all times. And so we utilize Mega Tag 1 and Mega Tag 2 to get the best pose possible because our robot utilizes a lot of pose and not only snaps, auto drive, but a lot of other things as well. So we use one driver because it allowed us to have like a lot more versatile, not only in strategy, but like being able to utilize auto drive a lot more than we normally would. So we have auto drive for almost everything. The only exceptions are barge and ground algae, which are just totally on the driver, which is me. In the beginning of the season, we utilized this button box right here, which corresponded to a pull on the reef. So our decision, our decision to change to one driver allowed us to have like a lot more versatile, not only strategy with having two human players. So we, we were able to fill that role of having one human player at each station, which allowed our driver me, to go either way because early in the season there was a lot more defense than we see now. So moving back to our limelights, our robot is very, very pose heavy. So if we're on one side of the field versus another, it changes our like snaps. And so having really good pose is really needed for us to have not only good scoring, but also consistency. So having all of this just overall makes us a better team and allows us to do a lot more. And either it's algae or coral or hanging, everything just is, becomes a lot more cohesive when we have a good pose, which is why our limelights are very important. All right, folks, so that was your look here at Team 948's uh, robot coming off a of Chessy Champs win just two weeks ago. Uh, really, really incredible machine. So thank you guys so much uh, for allowing us to come and take a look at this robot and good luck with the rest of your competition. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. Animark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to animark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions. Founded by FIRST alumni, FRC Tees understands what teams need. High quality apparel fast. From t-shirts to jackets and more, with a free 14-day turnaround and faster options available, you can join 200 plus teams who are already saving. Apply for a sponsorship and get your quote now at frctees.com.